Good morning and welcome everyone uh, to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Um, Today is June 15th and um, we have uh, Marcella Oliviero and Andrea Zok with us today who are going to be our main presenters. Um, they're going to be uh, going through their presentation for their Atlas Award winning um, presentation on Teach So You'll Learn, and I didn't include the complete title, but this is with Zerdy, and many of us who are at the Open Imperio Conference in New York um, are familiar with Zerdy, and some of us have seen it. Um, not all of us have used it, so we're all very curious about it. Um, before we launch into that presentation, I just want to say welcome to both Marcella and Andrea. Thank you for agreeing to be here and present for us. Thank you, Tarisha. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so before we launch into their presentation, I wanted to uh, let us um, give updates on projects or any other announcements that might be um, timely. So does anyone... Well, um, this is Neil. I do want, I mean, I sent a, an email yesterday on the update of Sakai uh, 11 status. Would you mm -hmm. like me to repeat that or? Yeah, for the recording, I guess that would be great. Okay. So we are at an RCO1, our first release candidate, and, and uh, we're hoping, we're planning to get an RCO2 out, fixing some blocker priority issues by next Tuesday. And, um, and let me see. Uh, so, kind of the the things we're missing um, is so what. Hopefully, if we so hopefully we'll meet that milestone because we have some known blocker priority issues that still need addressing. I'm not going to get into all the detail in the email because if you saw it, it's a pretty long email. Um, but the high level is that if we can if we can meet that goal by next Tuesday, then we'll get an RCO two. We're gonna we know we'll still need an RCO three because we need to implement. The community is deciding on what properties to turn on by default <clears throat> in 11 out of the box. And we have not finished the uh, help documentation yet. So uh, the help documentation will be uh, will be ready for RCO3, it looks like, but not, not in time for an RCO2. And that would kind of push our timeline out to, um, and that's the online help documentation in Sakai, that when you like, click on a question mark, that comes up. Obviously, for Sakai 11, like the whole thing has changed. The, the look has changed everywhere, so it's a huge job. Um, and we're kind of pushing that, that schedule out. It looks like if we got an RCO3, you know, got the RCO2 yet next week and then had time for any last second blocker priority bugs, had a chance to get in the help documentation, had a chance to work on the properties, then we could do an RCO3 maybe the week after, and we'd be looking at maybe the first week in July for that. Uh, of course, there's July 4th holidays and other things that can happen, but that's the rough schedule. And RCO3, hopefully by that point, we would have addressed all the blocker issues, got in the help documentation in, got in property set, and then we could release. And I guess kind of related to that, one of the things that the, the marketing, uh, Sakai Marketing Group has been discussing is having a celebration for that release. So, um, and. We haven't started planning on that yet, but the idea would be that maybe people at different institutions, you know, you could get some Sakai gear, Sakai caps or Sakai shirts and wear them and snap yourself on Twitter and maybe have a little celebration and we could have maybe a global virtual celebration when that happens because it's a pretty, pretty big uh, uh, deal. Sakai gear. So Dr. Chuck has set up a Land's End. Uh, um, some of you may already have Sakai gear from previous, you know, Sakai events, so you could always use that. You know, some people have like Sakai virtual conference t-shirts. Some people have Sakai gear shirts from previous conferences or Sakai shirts, so you could always wear that. But I will uh, paste in the link from Dr. Dr. Chuck went to Land's End, and he set up um, an Aperio store where you can get. Uh, you can get uh, shirts or caps, whatever you want. Of course, you have to pay for them, but then you can add the logo onto them, and you can add a Sakai logo on, or he has Sugi logo set up. I think he has a Perio logo set up. So I will find, I will dig up that link from from Dr. Chuck Severance and include it in the in the meeting minutes.
So that's pretty much the summary. I mean, like I said, without getting into a lot of detail, if anyone has any questions on the email, I'm happy to take it. Otherwise, I think that would be about it. Sorry, I thought I was unmuted <laughs> and I was talking to you, but um, thank you for those updates. And um, oh, thanks also for the link. What is that link? Is that uh, Terry? That's a Google link for Sakai gear. Okay. Oh, that's just to the announcement in. Great. Yeah, perfect. Right, and schools can um, set their school colors on the, on the uh, Sakai logo or any of those logos, I guess. And yep. um, so you can really personalize it. Yeah, you can go crazy with the colors. Yeah, so it should be fun. And um, we hope all of you will participate in that. <clears throat> That'd be great. So, uh, Neil, you've also posted a JIRA of the week. Uh, on Etherpad, I'm going to also put it in the chat in case people want to jump over there and take a look at <clears throat> that Jira. Thanks. Thanks, Trisha. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this was too Sakai specific, um, but I know that's what we've mostly been doing uh, uh, in terms right. of the Jiras. Um, but I guess it's up. So, yeah, this is one where I was having a discussion with a community member because uh, what Neelam is suggesting uh, is a bug to me looks like a, an expected behavior. So I thought, well, maybe I don't understand what's going on here. So. Hmm. So it looks like, so there's merged announcements from one site into another, I'm assuming, and a private announcement from the originating site is visible to users who shouldn't have access to it because it's private in the new site, is that, so yeah, there's two sites, okay. Right, and my thinking, to me, it's like if you're merging it into a new site, then the students in that site should have access by default. And it sounds like Neil, I'm saying, well, no, because if they should only have access to the, to the um, announcement that's been made public, um, but the one that's private, then they shouldn't have access to it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's very confusing, right? Like, why would you? merge in an announcement that then you cannot have access to in the site, into that site, unless they just sort of all come over together and you don't have a choice. But even then, to me, it seems really confusing. Um, so. Mm -hmm. I can see <clears throat> his perspective. I can certainly understand that, expecting it to have the same settings on the one hand, but also um, I can also see your perspective on that. And honestly, I don't know how that works in Sakai 10. Uh, does anybody else off the top of your head know if that behavior is the same in Sakai 10 or does it work differently in Sakai 10? This is Charles from ISU. We've never really done much with merged announcements, so I'm not sure. I kind mm -hmm. of agree with you, Trish. I can kind of see the argument from both sides, and I'm not sure what really should be the default. <laughs> what the right behavior is. Great. Well, um, I, you know, some of us could certainly um, take a look at how that behaves in Sakai 10 and comment in the JIRA. And if any of you have... Um, opinions about how that should work, um, then I hope you'll also comment in the JIRA. And Jennifer is asking in the chat, is this a merge or an import? That's a good question because it doesn't really say. I, I kinda, It does say it was a merge. So imports come over as to the new site. And I assume that merges would too, but honestly, I don't know. I just haven't used that feature enough to really be familiar with how it works. It says that uh, and the, on the JIRA, Neelam says that in Sakai 10, it behaves the same way as 11, so that. Oh, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't even read the, all the comments, so. Yeah, so. Okay. 
making me think that that's really the intended behavior. Like I can see his point too, but although, like I said, to me, it's, it's overly, it would be really complicated to me, but, um, you know, yeah. Yes. And well, and so it also begs the question that Jennifer was getting to, um, as to whether these announcements are in draft form when they're merged, like they are when they're import imported. And if so, that's, your opportunity to fix the settings anyway. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> I'm, you know, I'd be curious to know what the use cases, merging announcements, <clears throat> I guess in a course site, um, you might have announcements that you would repeat and, of, you know, but if you had a private announcement, I <laughs> just, yeah, that's a, Honestly, I, I just don't know how that should behave, but but given that um, it behaves the same way in 11 as in 10, I'm not sure it's a bug. It might be a feature request to change the behavior. Right, but then if it's a feature request, if people who designed it made it that way intentionally, then you're sort of surprising those people, you know, so mm -hmm. it seems like mm -hmm. it just seems like there's no perfect answer. It's kind of based yeah. on a small sample of people on this call. It doesn't sound like a ton of people are using it. And probably for good reason that you can always copy and paste and create a new announcement and make sure you know exactly who it's going to and, you know, avoid the confusion of, of how you think it might behave. Right. Um. Just as a point of information, if you, at least in version 10, if you merge announcements, they do not come in as draft, they come in as posted. Oh, okay. So that's, that's also a difference. Interesting. And I assume, you know, a private announcement could be private to a group. Uh, and I assume that's what this is. So it's a group scoped announcement and that group probably doesn't exist in the new site. Um, there's a lot of nuances to this. I just don't know what the answer is. So I would say if, if it behaves that way in 10, then any change to that would be a feature request and it would have to be vetted or you know, somebody would have to really care about it and assume that responsibility for making that change. Okay, thanks. I mean, if anyone, if anyone wants to put a comment on it, then, then feel free to. If nobody does, I will put a comment that I brought it up on the teaching and learning group and that it wasn't, what I would say is it's not totally clear what we, the behavior should be, but since it works that way in 10, uh, maybe it should be a feature request, but since it, you know, Mm -hmm. might actually be how it was designed that it might require a little more, you know, community vetting before, you know, before even making, looking into that feature. Right. Yeah. It's, it's an you. interesting question. Yeah. Thank you. So um, we are ready to move to our main uh, presenters and topic on uh, teaching with Zerdi. So uh, Marcella, and Andrea, we are delighted to welcome you and uh, invite you to go ahead and begin your presentation for us. Thank you, Trisha. Um, this is Andrea here. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, good morning. It's a very wet afternoon here in Bristol in England, um, so you're not missing much. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's move on to our presentation. Um, as you already said, um, we deal with Xerti, so this is something uh, different from um, what I imagine the majority of you um, are familiar with. I'll be speaking um, mainly on the background and the rationale in terms of pedagogy, uh, about our, our project, and then I shall hand over to Marcella, who uh, will um, speak more in detail about Xerti itself, uh, its tools, and how she has used it for our project. So, um, we um, used Xerti um, 
for a peer teaching project where we wanted to um, address some problems we had with our students coming to study Italian language uh, at the University of Bristol, already having studied it before. So um, the grammar component of the course, which is an hour um, out of the three hours of tuition that they get with us, used to be taught in a fairly traditional way. Um, and this didn't really engage the students. Um, we have uh, classes of um, relatively small classes of about 18, 20 students. Um, they I used to feel that they already knew quite a bit. They didn't want to go through a very uh, gradual, um, traditional approach. And so we had to come up with a solution. And we thought that um, two ingredients um, would possibly solve our problem. One, uh, having them teach to each other and the other was supporting this with technology. So, uh, and Xerti was a product of choice. In terms of the peer teaching, uh, this is nothing new pedagogically, but it was new to us and it was pretty radical in terms of um, our general approach to teaching and learning. Um, what, we, um, what we were hoping was that the students, by teaching each other, would become much more engaged with the process, um, have a more central role. So um, instead of just talking about student-centered learning, uh, we really wanted to go for it. In terms of the practicalities, we were also um, comforted by the fact that we would have local support for the particular product, um, which we would use in order to deliver this peer teaching with technology. So if we go to the next slide, uh, this is just as a reminder, really, that the role of technology in our project would not be uh, a simple um, sort of um, gimmick, if you like, where students would learn just the same, but just um, using technology. We really wanted to make it integral and um, a sort of uh, a necessary part of the of the learning process. Yeah. So I and shall hand over to Marcella now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the same time, we don't really want technology to replace the old traditional teaching style. So we don't want technology to implant knowledge into our student brains, but we want to create a sharing environment where in which technology the tutor and student collaborate help each other inspire each other and uh, give inputs and um, the product which is as andrea has already said is exerti why which is it for several reasons first of all it can be embedded in our vle which is blackboard and this facilita uh, facilitate independent studies as well as accessibility because our student can access the tutorials and uh, at any time uh, uh, from any different uh, from any computer station. Um, also, is a very strong authoring tool uh, that allows you to create different kind uh, to create tuto tutorials. You can um, fill with text, um, exercise, teaching activities. Uh, you can include pictures, audiovisual materials, videos, and um, is very interactive. So that uh, it is it, this in help facilitate um, improve our student motivations and also our student engagement. Um, yeah, it provides you with different kind of page types so that you can create um, um, different kind of activities such as gut fields, drag and drop, quizzes, and also multiple choice um, exercises. And some of those page types um, allows you to provide some feedback. So our student can always have a written answer uh, response uh, to the answers. This is a very <clears throat> engaging 
uh, and dynamic and interactive learning opportunities. Our students feel they actively participate in uh, the classes, uh, both as teachers and as learners. Last but not least, uh, is supported locally by our university. Um, moving on to the work stream in more details, as you can see, this project is structured in several interlinked phases. First of all, our students receive two IT training sessions at the beginning of each teaching block in order for them to learn how to use the software. Then students are splitting groups. Uh, each group is assigned a topic and a date for the delivery of the lesson is set. A student can access this schedule at the beginning of the teaching block, so they exactly know when they are um, they have to perform and they have to teach their class. Um, before the delivery of the lesson, students meet the tutor twice. In the first meeting, uh, the tutor explain what uh, she well what the tutor is expecting them to do uh, so what they uh, are asked to do so how to structure the lesson in a coherent way which kind of activities or, or, or exercises can suit well that specific lesson that specific topic in the second meeting um, student and teacher check um, the work the, the, the work students has produced uh, so the final tutorial and also the tutor provide them with um, some presentation uh, and teaching advice. Then they teach a 50 minutes lesson and at the end of this lesson they receive a final feedback on the performance. Uh, in this page you can see uh, uh, some examples of the work produced uh, by our students. Well, this page is mainly about the schedule. Um, basically, the tutor uh, provide them with a work plan uh, in order to help them to structure, the, um, um, to help, help them on uh, uh, how they can work together, what they can do before the first meeting with the tutor, during the meeting, after the first meeting, because obviously students in year one needs some help, they need to be a little bit um, lead or uh, anyway helped. Um, then um, in here you can see the schedule. So the schedule the student access at the beginning of each teaching block. So the groups, the topics, and also um, the date of the meeting with the tutor. And here are some examples of work produced. Uh, I need to say that in the last couple of years, we have used an old version of Exerti, but we are going to use the latest version, 3.2, um, in September. So the layout is a little bit different. Uh, so in this, but still you can see the results. So our student creativity, for instance, the, the picture they choose, uh, the use of the colors, uh, how to highlight some words which are more important uh, in this text, for instance, also the use of the, the emoticon. And then in this page, you can see an example of drag and drop exercise. So as uh, students are asked to drag each word in the right uh, box. Here, some example of grammar explanation, uh, this is an example of multiple choice uh, question. So this is a quiz and also you can see our student feedback on uh, uh, that exercise. This is an example of a uh, YouTube video. Actually, our students film themselves in this video and they also create an activity related to the video. This is a drag top and drop uh, activity, but in the next page we can see um, again, a drag and drop, but can also be a, a gap fill activity. And uh, yeah, in this exercise, students can lis listen to um, a radio uh, program and they can read a text and they need to find a mistake in this text. They are allowed to write um, the correct text 
in the second box, as you can see, and also they can uh, also read, um, they can check the, uh, the, the, the correct test just by clicking on the feedback button. So yes, um, in answer to Terry's question, the uh, the whole purpose of the approach is to have students as creators as well as tutors with their peers. So that's a big challenge that students have in our approach is that they both have to obviously learn um, the, the specific curriculum, which is a grammatical one in this case, but they also have to familiarize themselves with the technology um, and deliver part of the course. So they're only delivering two uh, units um, during the whole uh, academic session, but they do that as a group using, creating, authoring a tutorial with Xerti and then delivering it in class to their peers. Um, so, Marcella yeah, this is another anymore. example. Yeah, this is a different kind of page type. Uh, in this uh, example, uh, in this um, yeah, in, um, in this sample, you can see what students uh, did. So they choose this picture. There is a mistake in this picture. They wanted uh, the other classmate to read um, uh, the text and to find the mistake. And then just by clicking on the next button, they could find out the answer and also the explanation. So exactly gives you the opportunity of create different kind of um, activity in uh, different ways. Ways In the following page, you can also see um, Exerti allows you also to include PowerPoint slides or also Prezi. So our ch students, for instance, in this tutorial choose to um, provide a grammar explanation using Prezi and they could embed it into Exerti. Um, well, in this case, we were using Google Doc because part of this project uh, include also a video component. Our students are asked to uh, create a video in which they film themselves. And uh, I asked them to share a Google Doc in order to write the script or the video. Uh, it, this this for several reasons, yeah, because I, I obviously I wanted to check that um, there were no mistakes in the video, but also because this uh, encouraged um, the group activity and collaboration. And also we use Facebook. This is another tool that we use in order to um, um, encourage, encourage collaboration and uh, um, make this community uh, even uh, higher and stronger. Um, yeah, this is just an example of the video uh, produced by our students. Yeah. Okay, so uh, to kind of wrap it up uh, um, and go back a little bit on the pe pedagogic implications of our approach, um, it, I would like to say something a little bit, some of the changes uh, and these are identity changes that happen as a result of embracing this kind of um, teaching and learning um, model. So uh, students um, change their identity because as well as having their traditional and obvious identity as, as learners, as students, they are also becoming teachers. So they are student teachers. And as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, this gives them uh, more ownership of the of the whole process and also it changes their perspective so by teaching they also becoming more um, aware and appreciate differently and better hopefully uh, what is behind what we do as, as tutors and what really is necessary to engage uh, their peers um, the uh, collaborative nature of the project is very strong and it was one of the um, principles really that we wanted to be central in uh, in our project. So they collaborate, they do group work, uh, um, and this implies a lot of uh, uh, soft skills as well as hard skills. Obviously, the, the IT skills, uh, Marcella mentioned before, are being catered for uh, by specific dedicated sessions, but they also need to negotiate with each other, to mediate, um, to plan, 
And we provide, in fact, Marcella as, as the course tutor provides a lot of support uh, in that respect. But um, this as um, I think it, it adds value um, with regard to a more um, traditional uh, university sort of um, teaching scenario. Uh, also presentation and, uh, and teaching skills per se are, um, are acquired, although we are obviously aware that they are not skilled and qualified or um, tutors, uh, so they are still students and they receive a lot of guidance in especially in terms of what we expect them to do as teachers. Yes, students uh, teach face to face. And in terms of assessment, we need to say that our students receive some feedback, but uh, they um, don't receive a mark on this work. This is part of our course. But the way they are assessed is at the end of the year through a grammar course. So it's mainly based on their learning, what they have learned. Yes, this is not a, uh, a teaching unit, so they are not. Uh, which we do actually uh, here uh, in later years where students actually are taught to teach. Um, but here they are not, it's just a different way of learning. Yeah, Xerti is not only a presentation software you can use for presentations, but Xerti allows you to create activities. So what I was showing before were just some samples or activity you can create. You can create Garfield uh, exercise, multiple choice, uh, matching text. And yeah, they are interactive uh, activity. You can create interactive activities. The, the, good, the good thing is that uh, they, these become, yes, they do become learning objects if you want to use that kind of um, definition. And they can re okay, they can be reused as we said earlier. They can be uh, put in a repository, and they can be accessed by uh, the stakeholders uh, directly, but also by other students, uh, students who are uh, learning, for example, Italian from scratch at our institution, can also access these tutorials. And the fact that they've been created by their peers adds a little bit of a free zone, if you like. Um, it you know, students are more curious to see what actually has been produced by their colleagues. Yeah. So um, students stay obviously as students, but uh, they keep um, um, they they have a, a, a strongest sense of a shared experience. Um, there is a sense of uh, responsibility as well to uh, your your peers by delivering something to them and being judged upon it. Um, so um, that's also something that changes as a result of this approach. Mm, yeah, just answering um, last question. Uh, students meet uh, student meet the tutor twice before the delivery of the, uh, of the lesson. Uh, they do the, the tutor gives them some instructions on uh, uh, how to plan and how to structure the lesson because obviously they have never done it before and um, and obviously they are they are guided by the tutor and in terms of um, um, uh, lesson structure but also activities and exercises they can produce and so yes they have a kind of rubric it's not just the students, though, who, um, whose identity changes uh, as a result. We also uh, change uh, in this approach. And so instead of being the usual sort of frontal or um, broadcasting um, role, uh, being in front of a class and monodirectional, so where I speak and I teach and students listen to me, um, there is a flipping of the process and so students become teachers as well um, and we uh, become less uh, obviously central we are still central i think but it's a pluricentrality if you like mm -hmm. um, because obviously marcella as the the, the the tutor in question does a lot of work behind the scenes um, but the question of authority is more nuanced um, and so um, there is a sense of 
if you like, um, more democracy in the classroom mm -hmm. as a result, and that in increases um, a sense of responsibility as well. And obviously there is a very strong sense of collaboration because students become leaders in uh, this new environment and uh, but still the tutor um, is the person who has to inspire them to some extent to motivate them also needs to facilitate the learning experience and um, monitor the work because we need to make sure that the quality of the work produced is high because anyway we are responsible students are responsible from their classmates uh, of their classmates learning but also we are responsible of that and provides feedback in terms of sorry just looking at the last couple of questions um these are not education students these are language students they are doing a degree in Italian, generally with another language, so they are not uh, interested in education, actually. They're not necessarily interested in teaching. Um, we do do offer um, teaching courses later on for those students who are interested in taking on a teaching career. Um, but this is different. This is actually part of teaching the grammar through the medium of peer teaching. So, um, no. And as far as um, recognizing the quality of their teaching is concerned, this is a good question. Um, we do not at the moment provide uh, a mark which is summative for this. So it's simply formative. It's part of um, a learning curve, if you like. We do not find that they are less engaged with it because uh, they do not get a, a mark for it. Uh, I think you will probably pose more problems and solve them uh, if we were to provide a mark for something that they are so unfamiliar with. And so I think the fact that they actually go with it uh, and embrace it quite a bit is because they know that ultimately it does not affect their unit mark at the end of the year. And also we want to emphasize on the fact that they gain new skills, they develop the IT skills, uh, which are very important in uh, in uh, our society, our based on technology, and also they improve their presentation skills. Some of them have already done presentation in a school, and they uh, um, get new uh, skills as teaching skills, which can be important uh, in the future if they want to um, to get this kind of career. So just um, to sort of conclude mm -hmm. our presentations, and then I think we can answer some of the more specific uh, questions or comments. Um, so maybe we can take them uh, in, a, in a little while. Um, from our point of view, the strengths of the, this approach is that um, it creates a different commitment to grammar. Um, it improves the uh, variety of the course. Um, they also study grammar much more in depth um, than they would normally because they have then to teach it. Um, so they are much more actively particip participating in the process. Um, and also it increases their independent study skills, which is something that we struggle in the first year in the transition from secondary school to university. Uh... The main weaknesses are related to some IT issues that we experience with the software, but that that hopefully will be sorted uh, as soon as we um, um, start using the latest version 3.2, which has an easier layout and is also easier to format text and uh, embed pictures and so on. Another issue is related to deadline because some of our students do not always, always meet them and obviously this makes the tutor work a little bit more difficult. Sometimes the tutor have has to chase them. Uh, and some other um, issues are relating to the te teaching and presentation skills because our students, most of them have never uh, done an experience like this before, uh, especially in the first teaching block, they are a little bit shy because they don't know each other. But uh, in the second teaching block, they feel much more confidence 
uh, confident and uh, the performance is better and um, uh, this is also because they realize the reason why we, we want them to do this work. Um, yeah, well, in this case, I don't know if we have time to show them the video, but at the very beginning of the chat, you can see there is a video, you can probably watch it even after, and it's very interesting because it's our student feedback on this project. So I really welcome you to... Okay, so I don't know how we want to go about, if you want to watch the video uh, now, or uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the the yeah. slides basically are, sorry, j just to finish, uh, are a summary of some comments, some positive and negative comments. But the video really um, has some students actually talking mm -hmm. about their experience and answering some of our questions. I can paste the link again. Okay. So that yeah, and I think I'll try to go ahead and um, uh, just share the video and in the session and see if that's going to work or not. Um, okay. so give me, I think that would be really interesting. I, I hope others are okay with that. So let me get that link open first. Oops. Oh, wait for me. <laughs> All right, let me share that. And allow a couple of things. Uh, I am, oh, here we go. Finally, I'm going to run. Okay, so it says I'm now sharing my true. Can you guys see anything? Five and a half minutes. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. Yes, we can still see the slides from mm. the presentation at the moment. You can still see the slides. Okay, so it might not work out. Um, that's unfortunate. Okay, so maybe the slides and the um, desktop sharing don't. Mm. Okay. We can oh, hear wait. the sound on the video earlier, yeah, so I don't know. Well, as long as the, um, you all can see watch it is fine yeah. it doesn't matter if we don't watch it if we are not able to, to watch it now okay well, i'm sorry that didn't work out but um yeah i definitely am gonna go um after we're done okay okay that's that's yeah. fine it's it's not sorry. a problem um, yeah i can probably answer charles question and uh no, I um, didn't find a student come out with exercise or activity more difficult than I was expecting. But what I really noticed and I was very happy with was the creativity. This is a chance because obviously the tutor gave them some uh, advice but uh, they have the freedom of choice, for instance, which kind of activities or exercise they want to produce. And I was very happy with um, some of the activity they created, the, the quality of the video, the quality of the exercise, also the use of um, audiovisual materials, pictures related to that specific topic, that specific role. I want them to um, think uh, um, about grammar as a means, something they, uh, something practical, not just as a theory or something that has to um, be memorized. So they were very good at uh, thinking of about context in which they could apply the specific role and matching it with pictures or other kind of materials. In terms of a previous question by Charles um, about the percentage of the course that is taught by the students uh, by, through student generated material, basically um, the majority of the course is taught in, in such a way. Um, it's just that different students deliver different tutorials. 
So Marcella um, teaches a couple of um, classes. Yeah, it's about two classes in the first teaching block and two in the second. It depends all, also on the number of students we have each year. So if you think about we've got uh, 22 weeks uh, of actual contact time, um, so 18 weeks uh, yeah. uh, are taught by the students, so the, the overall majority. Because yeah, this, pro uh, this circle is repeated uh, also in the second teaching block, so um, students in groups teach twice. Um, and yes, Trisha, I think the students do uh, feel freer and more able to experiment by knowing that they are not going to be um, judged uh, by a mark, with a mark uh, for what they do. Uh, I think that is actually something which is true. Um, there are also some negative comments. Uh, this is not just sort of uh, a kind of fantastic and um, I, uh, idealistic uh, kind of uh, response from our students. We we asked them actually in the video, if you, if you watch the video towards the end, we asked them about expectations and um, most, most of the criticism comes from students really not expecting to, to have to teach when they come to us. Uh, they, they expect and we will teach them which is a sensible sort of uh, expectation. Uh, they, they, they pay a lot of money to come to us um, and they do not expect that they will teach each other. Um, but this gradually uh, changes as they progress and they see how things pan out and they appreciate um, that it's not uh, a, a simple matter of asking them to do our work. Um, so their their perception changes, their beliefs change throughout the year, which is very interesting, and they become much more mature by the end of the year uh, than they were at the beginning. Uh, so that's very interesting. Yeah, and also it's true. Uh, most of the comments are related to the use of technology. I need to say that because we have been using the previous version of Zerti. Uh, students struggle st struggle with it, and uh, because we experience some IT issues. But yeah, what I would like also you what I would like to highlight is the central comment related to how our expectation. Um, basically, we expect our students to be good with technology, just because there is um, we all think that they are digital natives. But we need to also consider that not all, all of them are good or just willing to use technology. And this is something that um, probably we all should reflect on. And It is also something to do with the type of students that we get here in Bristol. Uh, these students are used to being often uh, I'll say a charged word, but pampered uh, in school. So um, this really challenges their perception of how things should happen in the classroom. And technology sometimes is seen as a shortcut, um, as a kind of cheaper way of uh, dealing with things in, in teaching, instead of having a tutor actually there for them, telling them what to do, etc. Uh, so the reaction doesn't necessarily mean that um, they are happy with using technology simply because they are, they've been using it for many, many years and since they were children. So they might be comfortable with the technology, but they might not be comfortable with technology being used for teaching certain things. Um, so it's interesting. I think we need to do a little bit more work and perhaps find out a little bit more in detail what they really don't like that much. Um, I think in terms of Xerti, the new version will solve many problems yeah, because yeah. it will become much more intuitive and so less time mm -hmm. will be spent in learning how to author and more time can be spent on being creative and being um, more effective as a presenter. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the the new version will solve most of our uh, problem, and uh, also students need just to get used to to this software. 
and um, yeah so as it, as you can see our next steps using the new the latest version version 3.2 uh, solve the work workload um, issue because obviously the tutor um, needs to follow the student but we have already sorted um, uh, this problem providing student with some uh, already with some pay, um, with some pages of the tutorials for instance the grammar explanation ones we want to um, uh, put more emphasis on presentation skills, so have done to improve the uh, presentations. So there is a lot of scaffolding uh, going on, uh, obviously, for this. Um, the, the, the difficulty is to have a balance where the tutor is not overworked as a result, because al although the tutor doesn't actually deliver the, the lessons, that would be much more cost efficient, if you like, in terms of um, resources because it will be um, something that the tutor obviously knows how to do. Um, instead, uh, the tutor teaching students how to teach is much more labor intensive. So we, we need to find ways of streamlining this without um, dampening their enthusiasm and their creativity, but also giving them uh, very clear instructions um, that support them and make them effective uh, tutors or presenters of uh, what we do. Yeah. So these are our students, um, and uh, this is the end of our presentation. So we are very grateful uh, also to our um, support team, uh, to our collaborators, um, and we thank you very much for listening to us and for giving us this opportunity. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope that although it's very specific to teaching a language, um, this might be of use to a wider um, constituency, um, of tutors and te mm, uh, learning technologists. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both, Andrea and Marcella. This this was really this great. Um, I got a lot out of it, and I think others did too. There are still a couple of quick questions in the um, chat. Sure. And so let's see. Um, and you guys did a great job of facilitating your own session of keeping track of the questions that came through. Um, so let's see. Um, have you ever considered allowing students to choose their own format or mm -hmm. or uh, for teaching a module? Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because I think they need to um, they need to be guided. They are not right. expecting first of all when they start the, the first year they are not expecting to to teach. So yeah. for that, it's already uh, something shocking to some extent. Yeah. Some of them yeah. are really, really surprised. And second thing, they they really need to uh, to be followed and to be told, as especially at the very beginning, yes. what they could do. I think with students who are more uh, experienced and more mature and um, you could definitely encourage them to be more creative even in the choice of uh, presentation um, software, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use PowerPoint very uh, effectively um, as well. Um, we wanted to go with something which has interactivity embedded in itself. Mm -hmm. So that's right. why we, we thought PowerPoint maybe, we started with PowerPoint in the pilot project um, three years ago, but then we thought um, it's a little bit too repetitive and too obvious mm. and it's just a matter of using text and perhaps a few images and mm. yes you can embed video in powerpoint as well etc but you can do not a lot in terms of activities yeah exactly right. uh, allows you to create activities and exercises this is that's why it's a very good tool for uh, teachers and for students to use so instead of doing exercises on the course book and also in terms of the product um, life cycle, if you, if you, if you like, uh, it's interesting because um, when Marcella decided to try out Security, I was very skeptical. Um, and I kind of sympathized a little bit with the students because it, it, it was not the most intuitive product to, to use. Um, but they have invested a lot in putting out a new version, etc. And, and it's very comforting to see locally in our institution that 
thanks to the efforts of Marcella and the success, and thanks to you guys for recognizing it. Um, this product is now being um, accepted much more in the institution here. And so it, it's great to see the, the interface between um, using uh, in practice and reflecting about it and then developing new versions and then using those, et cetera. So spreading yeah. it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so really interesting. I've been curious about Xerti and I, and I haven't um, talked to anybody before who's actually been using it. So this is, I've really enjoyed your presentation today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. So uh, in the interest of time, we're going to um, wrap up our meeting. We have a couple of um, items to uh, address. And our next meeting is on July 6th. And we're going to have a LAMP uh, presentation, a LAMP collaboration with multiple institutions. Martin Ramsey is going to be presenting that. And I know Neil is in the process of trying to corral um, folks who have expressed interest in participating in an LTI roundtable and a course development roundtable to um, schedule those, hopefully sometime in the near future. Uh, Neil, any progress on that front? <clears throat> yeah, there's uh, progress. I think we have uh, two or three more people hopefully re will respond so we can get, get the dates. Great. Fantastic. Uh, any other announcements or comments or questions for our presenters um, before we adjourn? Well, it looks like we are going to adjourn a little early today. So I, I thank you all for joining the call today and especially our presenters, Marcella and Andrea. Um, again, really enjoyed your presentation and congratulations on winning this award. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.